Hey guys, KumoCraft here to discuss some tips um, and perspectives on my end. Uh, forgive me if I go off into tangents, that's just kind of how I am. Uh, but this, the purpose of this video is to help you become a faster pilot, faster racer. And, uh, and uh, I wanted to give you my perspective and the way that I look at things that might help you build the connections that you need for your for all of this quad control to make sense in your brain so um, it's important that uh, we gain each other's perspectives because we build um, basically we fill in the gaps and uh, flying different things like different quads six inch tiny whoop uh, five inch you know simulator it's all just different quads. They all they're all going to feel a little different from each other, but the idea is all the same. And so um I mainly wanted to get into how camera tilt rates and um and those kinds of things affect quads on an individual basis. And they're not a set in stone thing like uh like, you know, my camera tilt always has to be at 51 degrees, 51 degrees exactly, or it's just not going to fly right. I don't agree with that because um, quad weight changes uh, how um, pitch or how cam tilt works. So if a, a quad is very heavy, then a high degree of tilt will require you to pull on the throttle a lot more uh, just to stay in the air. Um, and also have to use a lot of pitch to compensate to stay in the air. Um, if you're uh, pitched too, uh, too far low, then you have to really use a lot of pitch to fly faster. And, um, and that can also be a hindrance. So the whole point is, is range of control. It's getting the most control that you can out of your quad um, for like the race course. So um, freestyle guys sometimes are hesitant to lower their rates because they love how their freestyle rates feel. They feel very snappy and very fast. But the truth is that you're never going to use that very top percent. There's, they're almost, freestyle rates are, I would say, maybe two to four times faster than um, you will ever use in a race. So what's the fastest thing you're probably going to do in a race is maybe either a split S or something where you're going to pull a 180 and then go right through. Um, well, then you don't need all of that, that top or that end stick. So why not use that as um, for adding more resolution to your, to your flying uh, so that you can better control the quad? And so this is all about controlling the quad, having that fine control, like to where I'm, I'm flying just as well as I can walk or run or whatever I want to do. I, I can move about the world and I have all the control. I can do exactly what I need to do. I can hover next to this thing. I can orbit around that. I can bring it down low, orbit around the low part. You know, I can get up to this gate, flip over it bring it through here. I can do everything that I want to do. I can do it. So that's the point you want to get to. You want to have a lot of control. And I find that when you start racing or you start out, you 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 get into like the speed part, but you never get into the fine control part. And so that comes with experience and paying attention to details. So, um, so let's discuss a uh, camera tilt. So we have 45 degrees of tilt, and that's a very comfortable amount of tilt. And so that allows me to have a range of motion where I can hover, and I can pitch forward, and then I can pitch forward harder and throttle harder to go fast. So a lot of pilots are starting to get used to like just you know doing 45 degrees, and that helps them have all this range of control of the quad. And... Um, uh, I personally feel that everything is a balance. Um, and so what you're trying to figure out is um, how do I balance it so that, because, you know, I, I, I have no idea how to, like, tune rates or 
you know, tune all those kinds of things. Like I had no idea. And then I started playing with it and playing with it and like really getting to understand it a little bit more and more. And what I can say about all of it is it's individual to you. You're going to have to figure that out what's right for you because everybody's range of movement is different. You might be a thumber, you might be a pincher, you might um, uh, have a limited range of movement in your finger, um, or it's just different range of movement. And so you have to figure out what's going to give me the most resolution and most range of movement and what is just fast enough that I can manage around a race course. So, um, so essentially, uh, with cam tilt, I noticed that at 45 degrees, it's definitely very, um, very manageable, especially with a real life quad. 45 degrees is like really nice sweet spot to start out with. What happens though is that like with 45 degrees of tilt, you have all this control, right? But do you really need to go this slow around a race course? Do you really need to have the ability to go that slow? Um, probably not. So you could stay there, but if you want to go faster or if you start getting used to going faster, you're probably going to end up pitching forward more and putting more into the throttle with that. Um, and that's fine. You can get used to that. I find that just like high degree of tilt, a low degree of tilt requires more pitch work. And I want to minimize pitch work. I don't want to ignore it. It's very important to have pitch control. But I don't want to have to move a lot of pitch to go faster or to slow down more than I really need to. So what you're looking for is the right balance of cam tilt where um, you can manage your quad's cruising speed very, very well and throttling up will require you not to climb as much. So like if I have the horizon at like eye level and I punch it, it's going to climb as well. So how do I kind of control that better and how do I have a better range of movement there? Well, depending on the quad's weight, then that might require me to increase or decrease the camera tilt. So um, people might disagree with me, but I, I strongly um, am under the opinion and theory that it's all quad dependent. If, um, if the quad weighs a lot, you need less tilt so that you can manage and hover the quad more easily and manage that weight more easily. When the quads get lighter and lighter, you can actually go up in tilt and it's actually easier to control when it's up in tilt. So what I have found is the right balance that works for me in camera tilt in this quad here in the simulator is 53. That just works for my range of control and it keeps me from like whenever I'm looking forward, if I go into it, it doesn't climb very much, it doesn't climb as much. And I only have to compensate very slightly with pitch to go straight. So my range of control is more focused. So now instead of having a, a, a lamp, I have a flashlight and I can control within that spot a lot better. And I don't have to move as much. So that's kind of what you're looking for. So then this seg segues into rates. So how do rates come into play? Well, when you lower your rates, um, what happens is that when you fly slowly, low rates are even slower. And so it's very uncomfortable to fly slowly and technically with low rates unless you are on the throttle. So let's look at my rates. So I have, um, currently these are my rates that I fly. Um, as I, as I start to get more and more advanced, um, these numbers might change and shift uh, on a per axis basis. But for now, the way that I like to keep things um, very evenly within the numbers, and then I like to allow the quads geometry or um, the way that it, it, it flies or, or weighs uh, dictate how the the control feels as long as the rate is in the range I can kind of adjust for the rest but possibly later on I will be micro adjusting per axis like maybe 52 on pitch um, maybe bring this number lower or higher depending on what I'm doing and this is what I'm going to explain as to how not necessarily how this works but 
more how what you're looking for because that that was the biggest thing for me is like how do I know if my rates are right how do I know if um, if I'm if I'm if I'm doing the right thing like what what am I looking for and it's okay if you don't know what you're looking for when I started out I didn't know what I was looking for but over time you start to develop a sense of little micro differences and um, and you start to pick apart those things and that just comes with time but um, but still I'm still going through that that time and now that I'm I've kind of passed some things I've kind of like um, realized some things uh, playing with rates and camera tilt and all those kinds of things then that way I can give you my perspective so that you know maybe you can better understand what to look for so currently these are my rates I used to fly rates that were a little more like like really low on the low end here something a little more in like the 40 40 ish here and then bring this down to like one so it's like super low rates and mainly it was like in the sim because in the sim I don't have to worry too much about um, about batteries and I'll explain why so when when you have a really low rate the, the quad feels really really sluggish under low throttle it's only when you get into the high throttle that you feel like you have a lot more control like you can move the stick a lot more and and have a lot more control while you're under a lot of power uh, it, it helps you more like accurately uh, orbit things and hug them tighter but only when you're under high throttle so I, I started doing that and it helps to do that whenever you're flying with um, higher tilt so say I'm back at 60 so I have this really low throttle and really high tilt okay so now I'm just kind of like holding <laughs> okay so now I'm just kind of holding on to that that line and and I can just almost hold on the throttle but you'll notice one thing if you're not used to it it makes you um, blow your lines because you're having you're, you're putting all your forward power under that tilt and those low rates and so you're using those low rates that just hold on for dear life you know um, and and that's and you're just relying on that battery and that ESC just holding out under an intense you know um, high throttle uh, performance and there's nothing wrong with that some guys get good at that I got good at that for a little while but I found that this was very still very limiting um, I needed a little more stick and so I started to play more with rates and I ended up going up and down and up and down I finally ended up like uh, somewhere around here and um, and this was a lot better but it was still too fast in the under high throttle so under like lower throttle it was more manageable under higher throttle it was so it was kind of reaching that balance where it's just if I'm under high throttle I'm just losing a little bit of control and if I'm really really low on the throttle I don't have as much control but in the middle I have a lot of control so when I started to do that it helped to an extent um, but it was still not um, like snappy enough for me and I had to really, really be on the throttle still to to do what I needed to do. And then not only that, but having high cam tilt, I had to have more pitch control still. You know, I had when I did a split S, you have to pitch back a little bit further so that you don't hit the ground. So, um, so basically, you have to play with it until it has this like really good sweet spot the way I could describe it is like you're balancing a stick while walking forward and and maybe you need to um, go run forward and so now you have to figure out how to balance that stick so that you can run 
So maybe it needs to like tilt further forward ahead of you and while you're balancing it on your hand and then running forward. So that's the way I see cam tilt. So um, in the simulator, uh, what I've settled on for me is 53. And then um, the rates, I got these ideas from Captain Vanover's rates. He was flying, I believe, 1.21. And I brought that down a little bit to this. That felt more within my range of control. And then um, when I saw that he was messing with RC rate, and I saw that others were messing with RC rate, I never thought about that that way in the sense that I could have this number here where it was at, which I liked where it was going or where it was controllable in the middle. But it was still like, like, like it wasn't as linear and so I was kind of like doing a lot of bobbling so now with raising this it makes that curve not as drastic and it's more linear it kind of pulls that out and so now when I fly it it flies a little bit more like something that would be a, the likeness to like a jet so I can hold the throttle at a, at a certain cruising position and my camera tilt is at the right balance that I'm not worried too much about altitude control other than maybe just a tiny bit of pitching back or a tiny bit of pitching forward. So if I pitch forward just a tiny little bit, I'll start to decrease altitude or pitch back, it'll start to climb. So it has this nice little sweet spot. And then if I really want to push into it, then I could pitch forward harder and then I can get into it. And I don't have to move as much. So it's the right balance of weight and, and speed and control so now I have this like linear movement and it allows me to you know really like better able to accurately predict and hold an orbit and so uh, the way that I fly like I describe to people is I fly orbitally one way that you could visualize that is if you were like spider-man and you needed to go um, swing around this pole uh, up further ahead you shoot at the top of the pole and then I'm gonna swing around it so orbit it and so then I'm using throttle as if it were um, pulling tension on the line or slack so if I let off the throttle it'll open me up more if I pitch back it'll open me up more then if I want to get tighter I just pitch forward a little bit throttle a little bit roll a little bit and so the closer and closer you get the more you have to push into it to to uh, to do it faster and you have the more you have to pitch forward to do it faster so the camera tilt can help so that you're not having to really fully uh, pitch forward like as you're going around something you're already pitched forward um, to that degree so you're finding that balance where you can easily orbit something and easily control the, the trajectory of the quad so like um, uh, that comes into play with the pitch control as well so like um, if I wanted to like vault over that top gate and go to the bottom I could orbit around that that beam, this, one, this middle one right there. So I orbit around it as I'm pitching and yawing. Um, so I'm using that orbital flying to also do vertical maneuvers other than just, you know, horizontal maneuvers like roll, like a roll orbit. Now, when it comes to orbiting stuff or when it comes to like banking and stuff, I've noticed that some pilots starting out will do um, like a crosshair or like a horizon line. And that's okay. Uh, that helps you grasp the understanding that in a wide-angle lens, um, there's a very fine line between being on the right of something and being on the left of something. And so, like, if I'm aiming this crosshair just to the right of that post, it'll go just to the right and just to the left. So it's really difficult to hit something head-on unless you're really good at being accurate with your quad. And the reason why is because in the wide-angle lens, it's very hard to dictate exactly what center is before you run up on it and um, so people will use this crosshair as like a guide to kind of position the guide right on the right side or on the left side of say object of said object and so you you can use that to kind of help you hold on the line um, this will help you grasp but I don't recommend that you fly with a crosshair. Why is that? Well, my theory is that when you do that, you're, that's just another thing that you're um, using 
brain power or CPU for. Your brain is now having to focus that crosshair on staying on target instead of just flying. And so you're relying on this crosshair as a crutch to better maneuver your quad and using your brain to have to lock onto that target. Well, my philosophy on things are that the brain is very, very capable and very, very powerful, more than you might think. Just because you don't have a guide doesn't mean that your brain doesn't understand what center is. So over time, just like playing an instrument, it just becomes natural. And you understand exactly what that point is, even without having a crosshair. And sometimes you can do it even more accurately because you're not utilizing brain power to lock that crosshair onto the object. So, um, so I definitely recommend just, you know, open up your, your vision, use less OSD. You only really need some voltage, maybe some milliamp hours and, uh, time and that's it. Um, don't need a lot of distractions. Don't need to pay attention to a lot of things. You just need to perform. You just need to allow the brain to do what it does. And, um, the more you work on fine control, and pitch control and work on your rates and your camera tilt, the faster you're going to get. So the, the idea is to always stay as tight and as clean as possible. What do I mean by that? That means that if I have to fly slower to stay tightly to something, then so be it. I'm still going to be faster than the average pilot because I'm using less effort to get through something far faster. Um, than somebody who's going really fast, blowing a corner, correcting, wasting battery, uh, destroying their quads. I'm just f using finesse to guide this orbit, guide these lines through the course as closely and as tightly as possible. And it really doesn't require a tremendous amount of throttle. But as you get better at doing that, then you'll know, understand exactly where to apply the throttle so that you can do exactly that, but faster. And you'll understand where you can push and where you need to like let off. And so another one of the things that I recommend is to always maintain like a level of power through every maneuver. And that actually helps you guide the quad better. If you like, say for example, this dive gate, if I were to want to dive it, the tendency is to kind of want to hover over it, let off the throttle and drop through. And you can do that, but it's not consistent. To be consistent, you need to maintain some a level of power, a level of push throughout everything that you do, throughout everything that you fly, there's a level of push. And so being real pumpy with the throttle, you might be used to that and that might work for you, but in my opinion, it's more inconsistent. It's not guiding a line. And uh, guiding a line is not a straightforward thing. Guiding a line is almost like flying sideways most of the time. You're just holding onto that orbit and guiding that line through. So that's how I fly. Um, in the future, as I get better and better, just like you will get better and better, things will change. Um, I, I just hope that I was able to provide you with visualization and some understanding of what to look for um, to adjusting rates and camera tilt um, based on your individual um, uh, mind, fingers, and quad. So keep flying, guys. Keep having fun. Um, you, you learn by having fun. If it's not fun, it's going to be frustrating and you're not going to learn. Don't have expectations. Just enjoy the journey and just keep paying attention to things, paying attention to details, paying attention to how you can do things a little bit better, a little bit tighter, a little bit faster. Later, guys.